Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast. We just finished up our recap on the 76ers Heat game, but unfortunately the big story that sort of came out of that, other than some discourse about the 76ers Knicks series that we'll probably get more into tomorrow, is the fact that Jimmy Butler is now expected to miss several weeks with an MCL injury, he went down in the at the end of that first quarter after being fouled, and now it seems like his season and the Miami Heat season could come to a close. As we get into the segment, just a reminder to use the comment section for our live viewers. Give us your thoughts on this situation, but. Again, it was Butler going down at the end of that first quarter, and he just really never looked the same from that point on. And the Heat are at a very difficult point now where they're going to be playing another game to even clinch a postseason spot against the Chicago Bulls on Friday night. And then, assuming they win that game, they will have to face off against the Boston Celtics in the first round in that 1-8 matchup against the Celtics team that definitely the Heat have had their way against, you could say, in the past couple playoffs. They have faced the Celtics in, I believe it is three of the last four Eastern Conference Finals. They've come out on top in those series twice, but now they would be without Jimmy Butler, who has really been a kryptonite for the Celtics in these recent years. And it does seem like their chances would be a lot more diminished. Now, the Heat are 13-9 and without Jimmy Butler this season, which was actually sort of surprising to me, considering the handful of other injuries that they were dealing with. And they do still have plenty of talent, but again, I feel like to some level... To some degree, that offense just doesn't really have, I don't know what their issue is necessarily, whether it's they don't have, you know, a true playmaker to initiate the offense. It's Tyler Hero running the point guard minutes for them. And last night, he actually surprisingly racked up nine assists, which I wouldn't have even guessed necessarily just off of a first watch of that game. But it doesn't seem like they necessarily have that traditional um playmaker now they did add a couple pieces during the season that could potentially play into an interesting role here i actually am a big fan of delon wright i think that he is a very underrated player in the league and he got a little bit of play time last night actually 23 minutes and he struggled from the field which was an issue but is somebody that maybe now with Butler out, he can get some more run time. They also decided to roll with um, Hero as that starting point guard because of the fact that Terry Rozier is dealing with an injury. Now, I'm not actually 100% sure what the status is on him moving forward. I looked it up the other night, and um, I believe it might have been a quad injury that he was dealing with. He is absolutely a key piece for, I mean, take this Chicago game, you know, as it is. I feel like Chicago is probably going to be favored at this point. But assuming the Heat move on to face the Celtics, Rozier is somebody that, especially with a little bit of history there, I could see him having a big impact. We've seen these role players for the Miami Heat step up in big moments for them, notably Caleb Martin last year. In the Eastern Conference Finals, you've seen Duncan Robinson at times, who, again, he also didn't play last night. I think he was dealing with an injury headed into the game. They said he wasn't going to be on a minutes restriction. Maybe that was a smoke screen to just sort of throw off Philadelphia's game plan headed into it. But we've seen Miami in the past be able to sort of maximize their rotational pieces But through this run, they've also had Jimmy Butler with them as the steady force for them, and it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Now, nothing official has been reported in terms of what the timetable looks like. Shams tweeted out the idea that it's probably going to be several weeks, which I would imagine would take him through the first round of the playoffs 
And by that point, I mean, the heat season might be over as soon as Friday as well. So, is a very interesting situation here. It's, I feel like a lot of people are really getting on Jimmy Butler's case. And, you know, as a Celtics fan who has had my hopes crushed by him in multiple years of the past, there's a little bit of a rivalry aspect of, I don't love him necessarily. He beats up on my favorite team almost on a yearly basis. But, you know, I, I respect him a ton, uh, despite maybe not liking some of the foul baiting at times with him. But I feel like he's getting a lot of criticism this morning, being called overrated, saying that it's in due to the fact that he doesn't take the regular season serious enough and that somehow if he did this season, then he wouldn't have gotten injured in this game. I'm not totally sure about that. This was a little bit of a freak injury. But again, use the comment section. Let me know what you think about if there was a way to sort of prevent this injury, what your thoughts on Jimmy Butler are. I do think that the playoff Jimmy narrative is a little bit overblown because even after the incredible first round series he had against Milwaukee last year, by the time that the Heat's playoff run had come to a close, they were his averages for the playoffs as a whole had sort of come back to the typical Jimmy Butler stat lines, which is still, you know, impressive and He's still a very good player, but again, I feel like I have a lot of conflicting feelings on Jimmy Butler. He's a great player, and it is absolutely a shame that he's dealing with this in the biggest possible time. But as for what it means for Miami, I think that this could be a close to their series. Now, I know the Bulls aren't necessarily the most intimidating opponent that the NBA has seen. They've been painfully mediocre over the past handful of years, but we see at times with them, they are able to sort of, I feel like whenever you look at the betting lines surrounding the buck, the bulls, and I have no statistics to sort of go off of here. I just feel like they always do the most surprising thing in the biggest moments, whether it be, sort of collapsing against a bad team or beating up on a team that they're supposed to lose to. They are just a very strange team to really get a grasp on, but I do like a lot of their players and I think that the sub 500 record probably isn't fully indicative of what they're capable of. Now we'll get more so into the Bulls, um, in the next segment when we talk about their game last night, but I don't feel very good about Miami going forward again, whether it's this game on Friday alone or if they were to make the actual playoffs and face off against the Celtics. I think they might be in for a lot of trouble, which just sort of, I think that they're in a very interesting situation here where as long as they have Jimmy Butler, they feel like they can compete in the playoffs, but there has been a consistent level of injury concern with him. He hasn't played more than 65 games in a regular season since the 2016-17 season. And, you know, they have these pieces that are, you know, very solid for them in Tyler Hero as a building block. Jaime Hawkes Jr. is going to be on an all-rookie team as well. But outside of that, there's just sort of a lot of mediocrity, I think, on this Heat team. And we see that in terms of at least, you know, having an offensive identity. I don't really feel like they have one now we'll see sort of how this all plays out for them. But a little bit as well as a result of this injury, I do want to briefly touch on here the situation now surrounding the Boston Celtics, who, like I mentioned, came off of the most wins in the league in the regular season this year, locked down the one seed in the Eastern Conference, and are now going to be playing the winner of the... Heat versus Bulls game on Friday, they are now going to either be facing off of a Jimmy Butlerless Heat team in the first round or a Bulls team that, like I said, I do like a lot of the pieces they have. 
Um, Kobe White was phenomenal last night. He was my pick for most improved player this year. Plus some of the other guard play that they get. I know that DeMar is more of a forward at this point in his career. But DeMar is still as solid as it comes. And Io DeSumo has become a very interesting piece for Chicago. Seems like he's going to be a steal for Chicago. I believe they took him in the second round a couple years ago. But for the Celtics here, they're going to either get a sub-500 team or a Heat team that wasn't very good in the regular season and is now without their best player. So that's the first round matchup. In the second round, they're going to be facing either the Cavs or the Magic, who are both fully capable of providing a tough series, but um, are both very flawed in their different ways, shouldn't be on the same class level of the Celtics, and... I'm not going to say cakewalk because I feel like that's extremely disrespectful to these teams that are going to be in the playoff picture, but the Celtics should, in some sense, easily find themselves in the Eastern Conference Finals, and this is the team that has the most pressure from the media in terms of winning a championship this year, and they have just about a golden path in front of them to make that happen. Now, when it comes to the finals specifically, if they have to go up against the Denver Nuggets, I feel like that is a matchup they probably lose, but it sort of feels like they have to at least make the finals. And again, I'm not going to say, I feel like the term failure can be um, thrown around a lot and can be maybe a little loose, but it does feel like there is a real failure potential here with the Celtics. Let me know what you think about what would classify as a failure for the Celtics. I don't think it would be losing to the Nuggets in the finals, but you know, to some degree, anything short of that does feel like it would be a major disappointment for them. And this is just a golden opportunity. They are going to be I mean, they already are as it is, but now with the Drew Holiday contract extension, Brad Stevens spoke the other day. Sounds like he intends to sign Derek White to a contract extension along with the fact that Jason Tatum is due for his Supermax this offseason. This is going to be an extremely expensive team. And while talented, and I do think that there are ways they can build around this group along the edges after being in that second threshold and being a little bit more limited on the types of transactions they can make, this does feel like the year that it would be easiest for them to capitalize on the weaker Eastern Conference, the amount of talent that they currently have, and I think there are going to be real questions surrounding this team to some degree in terms of specifically that pairing of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, because if they can't get it done this year, again, Nuggets are sort of tough because they have the best player in the NBA in Nikola Jokic. But, you know, outside of that, what else would it take outside of this year for Tatum and Brown to come home with the championship? I've been on the boat even when they were at that 500 mark for a lot of the 2020-21 season through the first half of the uh, year and even into the playoffs. They ended up playing in the play-in tournament that year. But even at that point, I was on the boat of let these two develop w alongside one another. They're still very young. They have plenty of time to capitalize. But you know, now being 26, 27, this is the time where they should be really entering their primes. And again, the way that the Eastern Conference is currently sort of slated, it seems like it is absolutely theirs for the taking. But I guess we'll have to see how this plays out. Again, play in game on Friday night to determine who they are going to be facing in the first round. Let me know what your predictions for that game are. But on that note, we are going to be taking our second break of the show, and when we dive back in here, we're going to be talking about the Chicago Bulls and their dominant win over the Atlanta Hawks, so stick with us, and we will be right back. <laughs> 